uh, right there, right smack dab in the middle, is all this information, right? And um, I think I think there's going to be a lot of us who struggle uh, to work off of a bell schedule or off of a school schedule because for our whole lives uh, as professionals, for a lot of us, we've only worked <laughs> in some capacity in school or very structured, right? So there's some tips for working remotely and uh, just some different things to try to help you out. Um, and again, this is being updated all the time. So if you click on here, you can also get to more uh, more resources. So I, I, I couldn't even tell you everything that's in here because it's 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 a really the whole community uh, here at the district office has been joining together to to populate this. So I I commend my fellow coworkers. Um, so just so you know, that's out there. Okay. So. The first thing I want to talk about is how I schedule all this stuff out using Google Calendar. I'm going to go through all of the Google Calendar features, and then I'll come back to a Google Meet, and I'll show you all the Google Meet features um, and, and talk about some of the things where you may struggle with kids and you may have to really set some classroom management guidelines with kids um, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to go to is my Google Calendar. If you're not familiar with Google Calendar or you use it very infrequently, basically somebody sends you an IEP meeting and you hit yes, and that's your extent of using Google Calendar, it will be okay, I promise. Setting up a Google Meet is quite easy. So if I go to my calendar, you can see uh, here's, here's what mine looks like right now. Um, so I'm currently in this running video sessions, right? And if I click on that, I could show you all the details, but I think it would be better if I just um, make a new event, right? So let's say I want to, uh, at three o'clock, I want to start a Google Meet with my students. Um, I can type in, uh, you know, algebra help office hours, maybe. Okay, maybe I'm doing some office hours from three to four. I'm just going to set up an event just like I'd set up any normal event in uh, Google Calendar. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do uh, to get this meet link is I'm going to go down here and add conferencing. Okay. Uh, so when I add this conferencing, that creates that unique link, which is what I've been sharing out. Um, and, and that's really all you have to do, that's the bare minimum, right? You don't have to add guests. You don't have to um, add any anything else, any more detail than that once you have that link. Now, the issue with that link that a lot of people are going to run into, and, and I'm sure uh, Google is going to figure this out at some point, is that link is not really just available from three to four. Like some of you logged into this webinar before one o'clock, right? even though it says on my calendar that this unique link is available from one to two. Okay, so there is some guidance and some caution there that if you want kids to join a link, maybe, uh, maybe you wait to post that until you're actually in the Hangouts Meet. That's what it's called, Hangouts Meet. Um, and maybe you don't post it ahead of time if you're worried about kids clicking in there and then talking in the Meet, okay? Um, they could probably do that a whole bunch of other ways, but maybe we don't want to facilitate that for students. So just just beware it's not a restricted time for that link to be active. I'm guessing Google has thought about it, but for now it is what it is, right? Okay, if I want to add people onto this link, the reason why I would want people to be added onto the link is when they go to the home screen in Google Meet, which I'll show you in a minute, you'll actually see the schedule for the day. Okay, if not, you won't see, you'll say nothing scheduled, but if you click on that, you'll still be able to get in. So there's really no, no danger in that so far. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go into more options here. Okay, and uh, again, if, if this is an unfamiliar view to you, that's okay. All right. Uh, so if this is an unfamiliar view to you, this is just telling you the start time, the end time, and all the details, right? I've added my Hangouts Meet. That's what this tool is called. Uh, you may, if you, back in the day, you may have heard it called Hangouts, Hangouts on Air. There's like a million names for it, but it's technically Hangouts Meet right now, all right? Google Hangout 
is another tool which is basically like Instant Messenger. Back in the day, AIM, you know, that's basically what it's like. So you want Hangouts Meet. That's what it is. There's nothing else that pops up for video conferencing because we don't have anything. Okay, you can add guests as you would like. If you have contact lists built in, so for example, uh, like I used to teach math, I have all the math teachers saved as a contact list. I can just add them all if I wanted to, right? Which is kind of nice. Don't have to type them all. Okay. Uh, my my strategy with this, if I, if I was doing this with students, uh, I would probably say I would let them know they were going to have a meet uh, ahead of time but I wouldn't post it, and then I would go into Google Classroom, I'd post the link, and I would join the, the meeting maybe 10 minutes beforehand. Um, and I would say, look for Google Classroom for the link, and then I'd just wait to post it. Uh, that would be my strategy, but I mean, you can schedule it out if you trust your kiddos and all that. Uh, the way that I got you those documents and those attachments is I just added them to the description on the event, right? So I added an attachment, and it was a, uh, Google Doc that was already shared. Okay, so add attachment. Also inserted some links. Um, the Google Form when I added it as an attachment, it added the, it added the editable version of a Google Form, which is no good, right? No Google. Uh, okay, so that's no good. So we don't we don't want to do that. You want to copy the link if they're going to fill out a form, which is what I did. All right. So so that's kind of the bare bones of this. Um, if you want people to to see all of the details, you have to add them as a guest or else they won't see the details. Okay, so let me show you. So here's one that I've already created. Let me hit edit here. And you can, you'll can you be able to see all the people. I've, I've, I've invited 1,923 people. Only five people, seven people said yes. What a horrible party. <laughs> uh, uh, so I've added a meet. Here's the link that's live. Here are my here are my things that are, uh, this is my recording that everybody will have at the end. Here's the transcription of the text that is populated once I hit record, and here are my links, right? And everybody can see. So that's how that works, okay? Uh, one feature that I, I haven't utilized yet, but I think uh, could be really beneficial for people is live streaming with Google Meet. So I'm gonna quickly talk about that, and then, um, and then I'm gonna jump back over to the view of, of Google Meet so I can show you the bare bones, right? But again, this is a setup part you have to do ahead of time. So uh, what we're doing right now is supposed to be interactive and I shouldn't be talking for an hour straight, although I am, uh, but I want the opportunity to see other people's faces, to talk to them face to face, um, and to have the chat. Okay, but maybe I just wanted to have the chat. I don't really want anybody jumping on with me. I just kinda of wanna run the show. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm doing a read aloud, or maybe um, I'm just explaining something for you know ten or fifteen minutes. I want kids to be able to see it in live time, but I don't really uh, care about them interacting with me. Okay, so that would be the live stream option. So uh, the way that works is you do the exact same step. So again, you click to start an event. Um, I'm going to say live stream algebra one. Okay, and then I'm going to add. Anybody that I want to present with me, I need to add as a guest. So if I'm presenting solo, it doesn't matter. Um, but let's say me and a couple other Algebra One teachers all work together and we want to present something as a group and live stream it out to kids. Uh, if you're worried about the limit, it's 100,000 people on a live stream right now. So I don't think you'll hit it. If you do, we need to capture your uh, online energy because you are the best presenter online ever. Um, in the traditional Google Meet, which is what we're doing, it's 250, and holy cow, we're kind of close, which is nuts. Uh, so again, I don't think you'll hit those numbers, um, but if, if for whatever reason you're worried about that, uh, those, those are the numbers, 100,000 on a live stream. All right, so I'm, I'm not gonna add anybody because I'm just gonna do this thing solo. I'm gonna add in my Google Meet, just normal, um, and then when I click, sorry, I did that too fast. I'm I gotta learn this. Uh, when I click this little arrow after I create my meet, it's gonna give me my details. So people can actually join using their uh, a phone number and a pin um, if they don't if they don't have access to um, audio on their Chromebook for whatever reason. I'm gonna click Add Live Stream. Okay, and then it gives me this really weird uh, message to invite people to watch a live stream, save this event, and create a view only copy. All right. 
So if you actually just follow those steps exactly as it says, that's how you create a live stream. So uh, I'm going to save, save this event. So I save it, right? So this live stream is created as a Google Meet for everybody who I asked to present with me, right? And then I'm going to go back into that exact live stream, and I'm going to click Edit, okay? So right now, it's just a regular Google Meet, uh, and it doesn't have the live streaming features that I need. It's just really a Google Meet, even though it says it has it, okay? When I go into more features, uh, I'm gonna click on this more actions tab and I'm gonna create a view only event. And when you do that, it gives you this bracketed live stream right here. Okay, and I hit save. Now, that is the link right there that I wanna share with my students or whoever wants to watch my live stream, right? Uh, that will come on at four o'clock. When I'm done, it's done. They can chat, but they can't really do anything else. And that's it. It's just really you doing your thing. Okay. Uh, there's also live streaming in YouTube, and I'll try to get to it if I can, but I don't know if I'll have time. Uh, my suggestion would be to use Google Meet. I, I, in, in this environment of life that we're in, unless you have kids that are super comfortable using 10 different tools already, trying to add tools that aren't Google based. Will will complicate your life. That it, you know, it just it's just kind of the way it is that Google tools play well together, and we have a lot fewer issues with them. Okay, so this live stream should be turned on for everybody, and everybody should be able to to set something up like that. All right. So there's kind of the calendar overview. I'm gonna stop for just like ten seconds and make sure I answer any questions that people may have. All right, cool. So uh, you don't have to start everything from a calendar view, but uh, a big thing on this whole online learning um, excursion we're going on together is, is being super organized and, and digitally organizing yourself. And I think Google Calendar uh, might be your best way to go with that. Uh, it's kind of the way I keep saying. Uh, I never used it as a teacher because the bell schedule kept me honest, um, but I absolutely would jump into it now considering uh, the, the state that we're in. Okay. Now, I'm back here on, and if you see yourself and you don't want to see yourself, you know, you just turn your video off. You can just go down here and hit the little video, um, or if you don't care. I'm going to create, I'm just going to go to the website and create a Google Meet just from the website as well. Okay. So you see, uh, because I'm the creator of all of these events plus um, if I have invited you, when you go to meet.google.com, you will actually see a schedule. Um, it's nice until people get there early or stay late and realize that the schedule is just, just a suggestion, right? Um, so I just want you to be careful with that. We have some ideas on how to get around that, but you know, just that is what it is, right? Um, but let's say I didn't have anything here and I just wanted to start something up. I, I didn't want to go through calendar. I just want to start something up. If I just click the plus sign here, it's going to ask me to give it a nickname. So let's say if I let's say we're going to do an SSC meeting, but we're going to do it Google Meet, right? Okay, and I hit continue. Telling people that you named it SSC meeting on Google Meet is not helpful. It won't give them anything. They won't be able to access it. That's not really anything other than just the title of the meeting that you've nicknamed it, right? So when you hit continue here, it's going to pop open this screen, which looks similar to the screen that you should get when you click on my links, right? And if I want to actually show people everything and be able to record and show them my face and record, I have to hit join now. If I just click present, all you'll ever see is my screen. And we found out this morning, if you click present, you actually will not be able to record your lesson. Um, and that would be pretty frustrating, right? So you want to make sure you click join now. If you're just jumping in and you're like, wait, where is he? I'm just creating a dummy Google Meet so you can kind of get the settings on how it starts, right? Uh, right here, the three dots, there's actually not a lot of settings for you to do. Uh, you can turn on captions yourself, which is kind of cool. Um, and then the settings wheel, our gear just picks your audio and your video. 
So I'm using an external mic right now because my audio in my first video was horrible. Um, but for the most part, you're just going to use what is on the Chromebook, and that's no problem. A nice thing to kind of norm for kids is that when they come into a Google Meet, they turn both of those things off. <laughs> my Google Assistant's going crazy. Uh, so if they turn both of those things off when they click join now, that I don't get that weird feedback or them yelling at their kids, well, or yelling at their younger siblings, uh, or or smacking on um, a piece of gum or something like that, right? Like I can have them turn that on whenever they want. I want that to be a, a, an ability, but maybe I don't want that right now, right? Okay, so if I click uh, join now, right, then you're going to be prompted with this screen right here, and this is the code that they would need if they're on meet.google.com, not SSC meeting. That means nothing, really. I mean, you might be able, it says can only be used within Southwestern City Schools, um, so you may be able to find uh, links there, but I, I just wouldn't rely on that. Um, Jason, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, go for it. It's Jennifer. I did one this morning with my kids, and I posted the meet google.com on their classroom for them to click on and gave them the code cash math and they could all get in okay cool so, so it did work as long as they were within the domain yes they have to be in sw yeah they have to be southwestern perfect okay so i guess uh learn things as i go which is great right uh i, I i'm a self-professed uh, jack of all trades master of none so thanks jen i appreciate that a lot uh, so I guess you can use that, but um, this this link is equally, you know, as good. So that's what I've been sharing out with people. Um, under details, you'll see any information that I posted if I had a gal calendar invite, but you won't see that because we just started this one, right? And then let's just talk about kind of the dashboard view. I'm actually going to stop this one and go back to our normal one because there's more. it's more relevant because there's a lot of people. So if I go back to this one, uh, let's just go all the way around the screen. Uh, 179 people currently in this. I'm 78 comments behind in the chat on this screen, but on my other screen, I am caught up on the chat. So that's pretty good. Uh, so um, this right here is just showing me up in the top right that I'm presenting my screen and then there's my video so I can see and then this is auto populating people um, I can pin people if I want to so if I wanted to pin Erin to the screen I could pin her to the screen so I always saw her um, I can I can also uh, I, I can also well I used to be able to unmute somebody's mic but they just changed that setting so I cannot do that anymore so if I want somebody to answer if I want to call on somebody I have to call them out and they'll have to unmute their mic themselves, okay? Um, if I go down to the three dots here, uh, this is like, when I learned this right here, I well, first of all, I learned it yesterday. My mind was blown. I didn't stop the recording yesterday. So when I was recording, uh, I just left the call assuming it would just stop the recording at some point. Well, it doesn't. So if there's people in there, it's going to record it until the last person has left. So I found out. So my Google Classroom webinar that started at, at one o'clock yesterday went for seven and a half hours. And, and I'm not gonna call out who was on, no, I'm just kidding. We don't know anything about this, right? So you wanna make sure you hit stop recording when you're done, when you're, when you're finished, and I'll show you exactly where that pops in uh, into your Google Drive, and it also sends you an email. I also am gonna norm for you to be the last person in the Google Meet. Uh, if you just tell kids you have to be you have to be out of this Google Meet, it's over, get out of here, then that's going to norm for them that uh, it's done and you can't get back in. Of course, we know they can get back in, but we hope that by you saying it's done and then you being the last one and closing it out, um, that they won't try to get back in. I, I can't monitor what a student does for 24 hours a day, um, but I can control that setting right there. Okay, so there's really no way. Um, another issue that a lot of people are going to come up with, uh, the link is not, um, uh, even if I, even if I share people onto the link, anybody who gets access to the link within the domain, 
anybody who has access to it can can come into my class. So you know, because I'm such a wizard at algebra, and people want to just get my algebra knowledge because I'm an awesome teacher, and they're inviting their friends into my algebra class. Uh, that that could happen, right? Um, so just something to be aware of. But I, if I was going to use this tool with my students, I would norm out all the classroom management techniques like I did in my classroom. Uh, I think I said I taught math last year, right? And so I normed out so many behaviors and techniques in, in, the, in a physical classroom. I just have to do that again, right? And, and, you know, being more strict to begin with often works better than being more lenient to begin with and then trying to close the door, right? If the door's already closed, it's a lot easier to open it a little way, but it's a lot harder to take a wide open door and close it all the way. Okay, so that's kind of my my two cents. I'm not going to tell you how to do it, um, but that's kind of my two cents. Change layout. So if I don't want to see uh, it auto picking people, I can have a sidebar view, spotlight view, tiled view. Uh, I've never changed that, um, but I've only been doing this for a couple days. Captions for myself. Settings is you know just your basically just your mic and your uh, video. Uh, if I if I'm having issues with my audio, I can call in. And then, you know, if you want to try to, if you're worried about any of the things that I just brought up or we're talking in the chat, um, report the problem, right? Like uh, Google listens to feedback really well. Uh, so I would just, you know, if they get 173 people right now saying, hey, can we do this setting? Uh, chances are they're going to work on it a little bit quicker than if I just say it, right? So that's kind of my suggestion for that. Um, Uh, down here, you're going to get the same kind of things. Uh, when somebody steals my presentation, uh, can, uh, who's on here right now? Like Jen or um, Angela, can one of you steal my, just present whatever you've got? And then I'll show, every, I can show everybody. Well, I won't be able to show them. Or Josh, if you're on here, somebody steal and present to everybody so people can see that. Oh, thanks, Jen. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, you just saw Jen present and then Josh present as well. And what shows up down here is I can see who's presenting. Uh, you can see it as well. And then I can just resume. There's just an option for me to resume. And I can just take it back. Currently, there's no way to turn that off. Again, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an issue when, and we're aware of it and Google knows as well. Um, so you just have to be careful there, right? Um, I'm looking at a lot of things. Yes, the link, uh, a lot of questions about deleting the link. Uh, even if you delete the link, if they still have, if they know what the code is, uh, it's, it's not gone. Um, it's, still, it's still available even if the event is deleted, unless they've changed that recently. All right, and then down here, turn off camera, turn off mic, and leave the call. I would suggest everybody, instead of exiting out, uh, hitting the X on their tab, just tell them to leave the call, right? I mean, it probably will work just fine, but like, let's just make sure we leave the call and then we'll close the tab, right? Let's just cover our bases here, just in case something weird happens, okay? Um, cool. Any, any questions on just the actual Google Meet? And I promise we will send out as much as we know, as quickly as we know it, about them updating anything. Different share screen settings. So all, all I can really do in sharing my screen. Uh, so right now I'm sharing my screen and you're just gonna see the whole thing. Thank you for asking that. Uh, so I can see what I'm doing on here um, because you're seeing my Google Meet. But the second I actually move to my Google Slides, so it's just a different tab up here. Everybody sees that? When I click on that, the, the only thing I can actually see on my screen right now are my Google Slides. I can't see my students, uh, and I can't see what the Google Meet actually looks like. So what I've been doing to try to monitor the chat while I'm talking um, is I've been popping that open in a different uh, computer currently. I don't know if uh, somebody else who has done this has a better idea. Um, I guess technically you could uh, open two tabs and try to put them side by side, but 
Uh, when I'm actually looking at what I'm looking at right now with y'all, all I see are my Google Slides. I don't actually see the Google Meet platform. How do I attach the slides? I didn't, uh, I didn't actually attach the slides at all, right? So you can't do anything with these slides. You're just looking at my screen of slides. Um, if I wanted to attach them, I would have to go back into that. I would have to do it through the calendar invite. Um, so I'd have to invite my students. <clears throat> so in a calendar invite, um, I would have to attach right here. I could attach my slides if I wanted to. So oh uh, yeah, norms. Uh, so the yes, you make the uh, Clarissa, yes, you make the slides in Google Slides and for norms. Uh, so my norms are uh, when students enter, they enter with their mic and their camera off. When they have a question, they can turn their mic on, and immediately after their question, they turn their mic back off. I, the whole point I like this, and not just uploading videos of yourself asynchronously, is you can have conversations with your students. So if I force people, I'm actually doing a horrible job of modeling that, right? But Jen has jumped on, and a couple other people have as well, and, and modeled what I would envision with this. That I would, I would put in some check marks. I would ask kids who are in the chat. Uh, I would, I would call people out and not, not call them out in a way of like, are you paying attention? But just let's have a conversation because that's the reason to use this tool. If you're very worried about. Um, the management aspect of it, it might not be the tool for you. You might just want to upload videos asynchronously and not do a synchronous chat with your kids. Jason. Yeah. This is Heather Nessler. I had a friend suggest yesterday, he's done um, some videos, chats like this before. He suggested like having students use like the hand raising emoji, emoji or kind of doing something like that. So that way if they wanted to say something, we could see it without them having to interrupt right away. Um, but just kind of like in class where they'd have to raise their hand to say that they had a question or wanted to say something. Absolutely. I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, thanks, Heather. That's great. Uh, and, I, and I also think with this tool, like, it would be great to almost get back together in a week and just, like, let me sit back and listen and hear you all say, like, this works, this doesn't work, this works, this doesn't work. Because, I mean, I can show you what I know, but I don't, I, unfortunately, I don't work with students every day now. Uh, so I, I won't be able to say, like, these are the, the best tips and tricks, but these are what uh, other people I've kind of gathered from. Uh, a couple practical video techniques. Um, if I am, let me show you real quick. If I'm lower than the camera uh, and I look up, so I'm looking at the camera right now, that's much better than the opposite view where I'm above the camera and looking down and you're looking in my nose. Uh, so just a practical view of like, you usually want the camera like right at your eye level. I actually have my Chromebook propped up to run this, uh, to run all these. So when I look at you, it looks like I'm looking in, in your eyes. And I also have to really focus on looking at the camera because I'm trying to build a personal connection, right? So if I only look at slides or another screen or, and I struggle with this because I'm using another screen right now, uh, but I'm, I'm missing a point, right? I might as well just record a video. So remember the whole reason for Google Meet is that personal connection that you're gonna make with kids. And then uh, I already said this one, but create a ton of check-ins with kids, right? If, if you're just talking for 20 minutes, again, I'm doing a horrible job of modeling this. Um, if you're just talking for 20 minutes, it's not as engaging. And if your video is not off, uh, I've been told that, um, just talking without a video presence of the person is, is extremely less engaging. Um, and there have been um, people who have researched that and, and have, have shown that running webinars and things like that are more successful when you can see the person's face who's talking. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to you know, get ready for an hour and a half every day to be presentable in front of kids, but um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you wanna be talking to your students. All right, so uh, any other things on here? I miss, I got behind on the chat. Oh, emojis. 
Emojis, nice. Uh, another way to get emojis is Emojipedia. Super easy too. Uh, I mean, there's a million ways to get emojis. Emojipedia is the one I have bookmarked. Um, <coughs> but Google's pretty much integrated emojis into everything. So uh, I want to show you kind of the process. Now that I have this video, I have it recorded, I'm happy with what it looks like, what do I do, right? So the first thing I'm going to do um, is hit stop recording, right? And then within a few minutes, what's going to happen? Hey, only eight emails right now. That's good. Uh, you're going to get a meet recordings slash or dash NOR, right? And that's going to pop in. To your email, so you get that notification. That's how you know that your video has been processed or is processing. And then you'll see it in your drive. And the really nice thing, um, like if I look at this, uh, it will give me two attachments. One is the transcript of all of the chat, okay? And then the second thing is the video. So what I have done with this is I have, uh, or Google does for you, they create a meet recordings folder in your drive, which really messes with, you know, my color and number system. So I'm going to have to figure that out. But um, maybe when things slow down. But uh, uh, you can see all the transcriptions and all of the recordings, even our test one where I was trying to go uh, use a, a classroom teacher before we closed and uh, all these different videos, right? So I can see all of those and all the transcripts, which is nice. Um, like this one is the seven and a half hour one, right? So if that happens, um, you know, you probably don't want to post seven and a half hours of video. Uh, so all I do from there um, is I go to YouTube. All right, so you don't, uh, let me just start by saying you don't have to host your videos on YouTube. Uh, I, I just like hosting them on video, uh, my videos on YouTube because I can see the views I can make the link public, so if you want to view it on your phone and you don't have, you're not logged into your school account for whatever reason, and you don't want to go to your drive and you just have a YouTube link or whatever, or you know my channel, um, then it, it's just a little bit easier. But by no means do you have to do that, right? If you just have a video in Drive uh, and you want to share that that video, if you just two finger click, you can share it with whoever you want. You can get the shareable link and, and post that in your classroom from Google Classroom if you wanted to. Sorry, this is a little bit of an aside, but I feel like it's important. From Google Classroom, um, if you wanted to, let's say I was going to post it in my sample class, um, and let's say I just wanted an announcement, right? I can just add that, that video from Google Drive, and it plays within Google Drive just fine, right? So you don't, you don't have to do this extra step to YouTube, but I have a lot of people asking me about YouTube and videos on YouTube in general. And so I kind of want to just uh, briefly touch on that. I'm doing good on time too, so that's cool. All right. So if you've never created a channel on YouTube, um, I'm going to pop out of this full screen view for now. What the heck is that? Sorry about that. That is... Not appropriate. Uh, also, things we have to work through are YouTube permissions, and it's just going to be, you know, an imperfect process. Uh, we have restrictions set up in YouTube right now, um, and we're working on the correct permissions so when teachers post videos, um, students will see them um, appropriately. All right, so just know we, we, are, we are working on that. So when you go to uh, YouTube, the, there's a couple ways that you want to probably get to your channel. Um, if you click on your little icon, you can click on your channel right here, and that will take you to the landing page. Um, that's how I'm sharing my channel out, right? I'm just copying this link and sharing it with people. Um, and here are my videos um, that I have. Um, and, and, and that's easy enough for people to see, and I'll be honest, I guess 95% of our kids are more comfortable with YouTube than us, right? Uh, so, um, so that's good. Uh, you can also go from right here. If you have a video you know you want to upload, you can just click the little camera and you can upload the video. All right? So if I wanted to do that, click right there. It's going to prompt me to find the video, right? Since it wasn't in, um, 
it wasn't in YouTube to begin with. All right, and then I'm actually in my Screencastify folder right now, but if I wanted to, I could go find that folder that was created for me, Meet Recordings, and I could just pop that in and click Open. I'm gonna actually choose a shorter one, just a little sample one we were doing, just so you can see the process a little faster. Okay, so it uploads it. Uh, title and description are extremely important right now, and if you haven't heard me kind of preach that, uh, kids need really clear instruction and direction, and you usually get the chance to do that in person, and now you don't. Uh, so, so title and description are way more important than they ever used to be. I used to be able to clean up the pieces of my lack of communication uh, in person, and I can't do that anymore, right? So make sure the title is not what that one is, and the description tells people exactly about it. Uh, once the video is processed, it'll give you a couple options for the thumbnail, which is just the picture, the preview picture they'll see. Um, so you'll hopefully that will that will load quick enough that I can show you. There you go. So you just get a couple options here. So you know, just pick the one that makes me look the best, the skinniest. Uh, I could add it to a playlist. So let's say I was making five or six tutorial videos and I wanted to send them just a playlist. That's a little bit more advanced skill than what I want to get into today. Um, but you could. You could choose a playlist or make a new playlist straight from here, which is really convenient. And then these are kind of important. Uh, if, you're, if, you're un, if you're teaching kids who are under 13, uh, this should instantly be, yes, it's made for kids. If you're not making your YouTube videos for kids and you teach kids under 13, I would question that. Uh, but um, I, 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 my webinars are designed for adults, so I'm just going to say, no, it's not made for kids just because I'm trying to follow these guidelines. Uh, but I also don't need to restrict it to viewers over 18. There's no profanity or anything inappropriate, uh, so I don't, I don't need to do that. There's a lot of options in YouTube. Uh, I'm just going to go with those ones as the bare bones. I hit next. Uh, I can add some more details. I'm, I'm not going to do any of that, right? Like I could do that, but I'm not going to add more than I need to. I'm just trying to get my video up, right? Um, visibility public is nice. Because, uh, you know, if you get to my channel, you can see my videos. The only issue, you don't want any personal information that's identifying anybody on a public video. Uh, okay, so um, just, just be aware of that. Unlisted, uh, anybody can actually get to an unlisted video. They just have to have the link. Similar to if you would delete a Google Meet, right? Um, if they had the link, they could get there. But... If they didn't have the link, they, they wouldn't really do them any good. And then private, you'd have to set the sharing permissions. Um, that's oh, probably more than you want to do. So public or unlisted, you can schedule it out if you want to. Um, you're probably not going to end up being like a professional webinar YouTuber. Well, if you are, that would be so cool. But most of us are using this as a, you know, as a crutch to get us through this time or to start learning how to you know supplement what we're already doing. So um if you were scheduling things because you made a bunch of videos at once, that would be cool, but I'm definitely not there. All right, and then I hit save, and then, oh, I did public. And I hit publish, and then it processes. Uh, that video is only 48 seconds, so it processed pretty much immediately, um, but for, for most videos, it takes a couple minutes to process, right? And now um, it instantly pops you into this view, and if you're wondering what this view is, if I would go back to my, my channel, okay, so I'm just going to click back to my channel. That view is my videos view on my channel. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The videos view on my channel is just uh, all my videos that I have available. If I go to YouTube Studio, that's the view that you were seeing. Okay, so there's like a million different things about YouTube. And there's no way to get them all out right now, but uh, this was what you were seeing, right? So the YouTube studio is kind of like your editing base for YouTube. I'm by far uh, the least qualified to be talking about this, but I at least know the bare minimum to get us all started, right? And then if you're having issues with the video or something, you can just delete it. Or if you wanted to download it because you, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you could do that as well. All right. So. That's kind of the bare bones on how I got started on just uploading things to YouTube. Uh, I have some unlisted ones. You can see I have a draft here, so that one never actually got published. Um, some more unlisted here. So you can see all your videos, which is kind of nice. All right, two things I want to touch on real briefly, and then I'm going to just uh, let you guys do the, do, the, do the 
do the work with the kids because I feel like hopefully we got you started on this. Um, okay, so the two things I want to touch on real quick. Uh, one would be YouTube Live. I think a lot of people are wondering about YouTube Live or what, how it could be useful. Um, in my opinion, YouTube Live basically does exactly what Google Meet uh, live streaming does. So uh, there, there's a lot of options in Google or in YouTube to, to live stream because, you know, if, if you have kids at game or, or anything like that, like that's a huge, that's a huge sector of, of YouTube. So that's kind of the design behind it. Um, so you could only use the webcam version of this. You create a title, you make it public, you could schedule it for right now. It's the same kind of settings as before. All right, so let's just go through this so you can kind of see me doing it so you don't feel nervous about it. So I could schedule it ahead of time if I wanted to. Not made for kids because who knows what I'm going to say. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, don't restrict. I can do more options if I want to. Okay. Uh, it's going to ask for a thumbnail. Oh, no, it paused. What? That's crazy. I've never had that happen. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see what happens when I reload. Oh, there we go. Finally went when I hit reload. Uh, so it's going to ask for a thumbnail and it's going to ask you to start. I promise that's how it works. Um, let's see what happens when I pop this back up. Okay, let's see if I can do it again. Not made for kids. No. All right. Oh, my gosh. It just spins on two for a while. Uh, so I'll just talk you through this. And then um, the way live streaming works on YouTube is you share the link. Uh, people can go onto the YouTube link. They can comment on it. Um, but you can just use your webcam. Uh, so it's not like you can share your screen and do a bunch of different things. That was a great picture of me. One of the best. All right. So then you just have this go live button. So if I was just going to set this up uh, ahead of time for my students, maybe like it's 1.48 right now, maybe I was going to do this at 2 o'clock. Uh, I could just go through these things. I could hit go live. I could share that link. However, I would share it email or or classroom, and then and then I'd be good to go, right? And then I could go live, um, and and we can comment on the chat here. Um, there's there's not much more than just that uh, for a, a live stream. The nice thing is when you're done with the stream, it's already on your YouTube. So if you're gonna do a reload or something, you're kind of tech savvy. You want to try it out. That's cool, but I just wanted you guys to know, I've thought about it, I've looked into it, it doesn't seem uh, as robust as using Google Hangouts Meet as of now. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, I wouldn't post videos with students. Um, that's just, I just wouldn't do it. Um, and then the last thing that a lot of people have asked me about, and then I'm going to stop talking, uh, is about Zoom. And uh, so let me just kind of give you, and I, and I sent out some webinar stuff about Zoom, and it's not, it's not that I'm not about Zoom. Uh, Zoom is just a, a little bit more for, a little more tech savviness needed than Google Meet. Google Meet, you can just go into a link, you can hit start, you can share the link, and everybody can do it. It's it's quite easy. Uh, Google's or Zoom, it's not that you can't do those same things in Zoom, um, but I just feel like there's more settings, there's more more chances for people to kind of um, fumble through some things. There are more settings, which is nice. Uh, I don't have a webinar on Zoom, and I'm not going to do a whole bunch of training on Zoom, but if you want to, you can sign up for the free account. Uh, when you sign up for the free account, you can get training. Uh, there's there's talk of it being five dollars or free or whatever. Um, uh, nobody is going to to pay for that because right now we're just going to use Google Meet. That's kind of where we're we're going to push everybody to Google products right now. Um, but kind of here here's just the basic uh, idea behind Zoom. Um, you can schedule meetings, right? So I scheduled this meeting just so you could see what it looked like. Uh, but the problem is. In order for people to uh, get onto a Zoom, uh, they need the Chrome extension or the app. And so like, it's just one more step which might prevent kids or, or give kids a little bit of frustration. So that's kind of why we're on Google Meet right now. But um, 
what the limitations of Google Meet Zoom might end up being a better option. Um, just right now, uh, you know, I guess proceed at your own risk. If you want to go into this, there are more settings. So I'll, let me just show you real quick, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> So you can require meeting passwords, so you can give that to your kids, maybe it's your last name or whatever. Uh, you can turn off uh, participant video, so if you don't want them to have video. Again, I think that defeats the purpose of this whole thing, but maybe that's what you want. Uh, and then you can kind of give them some more settings that, that aren't available yet in Google Meet, but I'm guessing they'll get there in Google Meet. So that's kind of my two cents on Zoom. I, I don't dislike the tool, I just think it takes a little bit more work and a few more steps. Um, the last thing uh, 